everybody. My name is Rick Habgood, and I'm going to be taking this segment of C uh, Citizens Forum. My guest this, uh, this segment is Wendy Bugarud, who is the president of the South Island chapter of Fair Vote Canada. Our, our topic is going to be electoral reform. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Rick. Uh, great to, great for, uh, for you to have for us to have you on. Well, thank you for having me here. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, who is Fair Vote Canada and uh, what's the goal? Uh, well, Fair Vote Canada is a uh, national multipartisan organization that would like us to uh, move to a different voting system federally, provincially, and municipally. Um, uh, our current system leaves half the voters uh, uh, unrepresented. Uh, they don't help elect anybody who sits for them in Parliament, for instance, or in the legislature. And we would like to move to a, a more proportional voting system that allows 80, 90 percent of us to actually have a vote that makes a, makes a difference and helps elect someone. So uh, the organization's been around for a little more than 10 years. And right now we have a real emphasis on the upcoming federal election uh, in October because uh, there seems to be a real opportunity maybe uh, to, uh, to come up with a parliament that might actually go ahead and do something about changing the voting system. So you're not too happy with 100% uh, of the control with only 38% of the vote? Uh, we think that's not good, yes. You don't think so? You're no. Not, you, you don't support dictatorships? <laughs> Come on, Harper, Harper supports a dictatorship. Well, uh, you know, know. We, we have had lots of parties in the past, federally and provincially, who have won uh, majority governments with 40% of the vote. Um, it's a common occurrence with our current voting system, first past the post or single member plurality. and. It's just, it's just not good enough for us. What's your definition of democracy? Oh, well, um, I'm not entirely sure. It's one of those slippery words. I, uh, to me, it means that all of us should have a say and that, um, that we should have a parliament, for instance, or a legislature. Well, we're in a representative democracy, so a representative democracy means that we elect someone to represent us uh, in parliament, and they should be there representing the people who, who voted for them. Uh, but those people should reflect the diversity of the people in the country. And they should consider the, the diverse points of view that people have in this country and come up with legislation uh, that works for most people and works in the long term. Uh, in a democracy, uh, does majority rule? Is that, well, that's, uh, that's the standard idea, it right? Is, isn't it? Yeah. So is. if you don't have a majority, as in votes? Well, right now, of course, the majority of seats in the House is what counts in terms of ruling. Right. Right. But it is constrained by our Canadian Charter of Rights, and it is you know, constrained by a few other things. And so um, majority rule ha has its limits in terms of creating, I think, a, a, a healthy, functioning civil society. Right. Okay, you've got an initiative going on right now. It's uh, visit your local candidate. Maybe you could uh, bring us up to date with that. Yeah, uh, uh, Preparable Canada is trying to get to volunteers across the country to go and visit all the local candidates for all the different parties and ask them a number of questions, whether or not they support, uh, purport, well, whether or not, for instance, they agree with a statement like, should, it, should a party that gets 40% of the vote get 40% of the seats? Um, and also asking them to sign a politician's pledge. And this pledge talks about, you know, being willing to work towards proportional representation if, if they have the chance. So we have volunteers here in Victoria and Esquimalt San Souk who have succeeded in contacting our NDP, our Liberals, and our Green Party candidates. And they have all agreed to and signed the, the politician's pledge. Um, I now have to work on Sandwich Gulf Islands in the Cowich and Malahat Langford. And some parties haven't uh, actually got their candidates yet. Um, but um, we hope to have a web page uh, before the upcoming election where all the candidates are listed, That's their great. answers to their questions, and whether they signed the pledge or not. And they've come up with a special um, picture for those who don't bother to respond, uh, which tends to have, so far, mostly come from the conservative candidates. Mm. But. Uh, we do have, uh, certainly in this area, we're, we're very lucky in the greater Victoria area that we have a lot of support for changing the electoral system. Right. Yeah, so um, now as far as uh, PR goes, 20% of the votes equals 20% of the seats. Right. 
38% of the votes equals 38% of the seats. The way we have it now is that 38% of the, the votes equal 100% of the power. Right. So that's the, that's the big difference, is that between PR and first past the post. Am I right with that? Yeah, well, it all, you know, it depends a little bit on the, uh, first past the post can give us very erratic results. I mean, we, we, see a, we can see a party uh, with less, uh, less support than another party actually form a majority government. Um, so there's all sorts of weird things that can happen. But 20% of the vote often means a party has almost no seats. Uh, whereas 40%, 38, 40% of the vote can mean that they get 60% of the seats and all the power. So uh, we want to change to a system where a party gets 40% of the vote, they get 40% of the seats. Right. Party gets 20% of the vote, they get 20% of the seats instead of like two, like that happened to the progressive conservatives many years ago, like happened to the NDP, I think in 2001 here provincially. And then, and then those parties will have to work together in a coalition government, possibly a coalition government, maybe, maybe a minority government, but they'll have to work together and that will provide a different kind of parliament for us be a more of a consensus building kind of place instead of uh, I'm the top dog and I'll do what I want kind of attitude. <laughs> um, so we really hoped, you know, democracy to me means that, actually there's this new word I come across, mutual accommodation. I think democracy means that we all try to mutually accommodate each other so that we can all live the lives we like to live so long as we don't have to, you know, within reasonable bounds of not interfering with each other. and. We can't, uh, it's much easier to do that in a consensus type of parliament where the parties work together for the good of the country instead of, as with first past the post, we often have sort of this top dog attitude. I won, I'm in charge, I can do whatever. Right. Okay, where does the federal party stand? Well, the, it's, I think this is starting to become an election issue because we've got positions now from quite a few of the federal parties. Uh, the Bloc and the Green parties have always supported uh, proportional representation. Uh, the NDP have come out in, in support of it. And even, and the Liberals are uh, a little undecided. And uh, even the Conservatives now have m taken a position that, uh, about, about voting reform. This is <coughs> they're, not, so they're not for it, but it's a position about it anyway. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting. Now, one of the things that, uh, from the Liberals, um, it's, it's a little confusing. Okay. Okay. In November, uh, December the 19th, 2014, just last year, last right. December, uh, Craig Scott, the NDP's Craig, Craig Scott, put forward a motion right. and asked Parliament who supported proportional representation and right. who didn't. Right. Now, as a bloc, the conservatives voted no. Right. Okay. Everybody else voted yes except for 15 liberals. Right. But out of 31 liberals, 16 of them yes. supported proportional representation. Right. Now, uh, one of the liberals that said no was Justin Trudeau. Right. Right. So, anyways, um, in a letter from Justin's press secretary, he said, Justin does not support proportional representation as he very deeply believes that every member of parliament must represent actual Canadians and Canadian communities. Okay. Not just the political party that appointed them to the House of Commons. He also believes that it is important to take an evidence-based approach to electoral reform rather than an ideological one and that and that all available options are considered. So what's your response to that? Especially when he says Parliament must represent actual Canadians and Canadian communities and what he's saying is that proportional representation doesn't do that. Well, uh, he's wrong. There are many different forms of proportional representation and some are more directly linked to voters than others. Um, and I think it's clear that the Liberal Party uh, wants to, is more open, the NDP have chosen one particular form of proportional representation and the, the Liberals are saying, well, let's study it and, and, pick, and pick one. And there are more forms of proportional representation than, than the NDP's choice. So 
uh, and maybe maybe people don't realize uh, what the, that there are all these other options. The uh, so I I think uh, what happens, I think what's happening is that the liberals are a little bit more, uh, a, a little more undecided or are mixed, uh, not sure where they stand. There's certainly uh, some interest in something called the alternative vote, which is just adding a ranked ballot and single member writings. Uh, this particular voting system is not proportional. It, it won't help our democracy get better. Uh, so uh, we really need to encourage people to consider uh, proportional voting systems. And, uh, an obvious one, I think, of course, is STV, which was recommended by the Citizens Assembly here in BC. It uses ranked ballots in multi-member writings. Every candidate has to be elected by people who vote directly for those candidates. There's no going through a party and then getting a seat via a party, uh, which is what a lot of party lists are like, especially the closed party list. So, um, so there are, are lots of options. I mean, there are there's many options. Okay, so on June the 16th, Trudeau said every vote must count, every vote counts. So he sort of went a little bit farther. Obviously, right. he did a little bit of study, and he decided that, you know, his original uh, maybe wasn't necessarily the way to go. Wendy, thank you so much for coming on to the segment of Citizens Forum. My name is Rick Habgood. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.